Okay, we'll reconvene the City Commission meeting after executive session for attorney client privileges. Um, I need a motion for action coming out of executive session. I move to grant Mayor Haynes and David Dillner the authority to represent the City of El Dorado's interests at the mediation with GBA and GBA builders. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries aye. <coughs> okay. Okay, moving on to next on our agenda would be the consent agenda. These items were sent to us earlier in the week, or later last week. Um, any questions or comments on the consent agenda? If none, I would entertain a motion. I move the consent agenda as presented be approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Old business is none. New business, or we don't have any new business to talk about today either. So that moves us on to reports. Uh, the Youth Commission met last Monday and finalized their plans for their yearly community project. And this year they're having a park cleanup day uh, on May 5th, which is a Saturday, from 9 to 11. And they're having t-shirts made that say, stopping pollution is the best solution. They are asking for volunteers from the community, as well as any uh, organizations that might want to help out. Uh, the staging area, we will start out here in front of City Hall on May 5th and be given directions as to which park to go. Any organization or person who wants to volunteer, volunteer needs to contact Tabitha Sharp at the City. And again, the City's number is 321-9100. Tabitha, do you have anything else to say to that? You got it all. Good job. And yes, I think we all should show up. Just, just a suggestion. Yeah. Good. That's it. I don't have anything. Okay. I don't have anything either. Um, I want neither one of my boards met since the last time we have met. Um, I don't I really don't have anything today. Okay. A um, couple things. Main Street uh, is going to have a Main Street form tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be, it's located at the Eldorado Arms, um, which is downtown on South Main. Um, the topic is um, uh, Go With The Flow, Pipelines Working For You. It's, it's going to be a presentation, I think, from the many representative pipelines in the area, talking about how they uh, interact with the communities. Um, it's an education uh, opportunity for them to educate our community on what the pipelines are. We have many of them around here, uh, plus an opportunity to introduce Main Street to, to those entities and uh, uh, build a relationship there. So uh, it's talking with Emily Connell, there's been quite a lot of excitement from the pipeline companies to have this venue and this opportunity to speak publicly. They have some oblig they have obligations to do that. And uh, so they're, they, they seemed very appreciative of the opportunity to have an audience. So if you're available tomorrow at noon at the Eldred Arms, you'd be welcome for that. It starts at, I have it at 11 a.m. on my calendar, is that right? Yeah. Where is the Eldorado Arms? Eldorado Arms is uh, on the south east corner of South Main and Pine Street. Mm -hmm. It's apartments. There used to be a 
Okay. A restaurant down the basement of that building, and now it's mm -hmm. open yes. back up for. Yeah. Okay. I think is that correct? It was in the lower level of that building. Yeah. Open to the public. Anybody who wants to come is certainly welcome. Um, next, I have. I uh, just came from this afternoon. Uh, a a session with the visioning team for Project Wichita. They are organizing their focus groups, and we should be hearing more about some focus groups here in, in El Dorado, uh, working with Inc. and Chamber and Main Street, as well as Augusta, uh, to, to talk about what are good opportunities for, for uh, focus groups for that effort. Um, pretty interesting. So more, more to come on that. We'll be spending May and June doing focus groups, and then it'll move into identifying themes and everything that come out of that. So, on a fairly fast pace with that, which is good. So, and that's all I have for reports at this point. All right, I've got a couple of things. Um, the first thing that I wanted to <clears throat> communicate to you all is the Government Finance Officers Association is pleased to announce that the state of El Dorado has received GFOA's Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for its budget. Uh, the award represents a significant achievement by the city and reflects the commitment of the governing body and staff to meeting the highest principles of governmental budgeting. In order to receive the budget award, the entity had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines for effective budget presentation. The guidelines are designed to assess how well an entity's budget serves as a policy document, a financial plan, an operations guide, and a communications device. Um, so the city has received uh, a designated budget presentation award and a certificate of recognition for budget presentation um, to the individual or department designated primarily as being responsible for having achieved the award. And I think we've been um, able to meet this criteria for several years in a row, so it's, it's good that we can continue that, that designation. Um, and then I have a couple of things that I need some direction from the commission on. So um, one thing that we had talked about prior to um, in, a, in a study session was the tall grass and weeds, and we kind of thrown that around a little bit. Um, I wanted to just kind of give you an update on where that stood. I don't necessarily need commission direction at this point in time on it, but um, what we're planning to do is we are going to um, do a, we're going to continue a proactive enforcement um, but in lieu of our prior practice of um, sending letters to property owners and then issuing a mow order, and then the Parks and Recreation Department would go out and mow lots that were not in compliance, we're going to pivot our enforcement strategy and utilize a, another section of our ordinance that allows us to, we're, we're going to continue to notify property owners. Um, we're also going to, so we have to send them a certified letter and give them, I believe it's 10 days to come into compliance. Um, but in addition to that, we're also going to send tenants a courtesy letter that, well, a door hanger or a courtesy notice of sorts so that they know that the property is out of compliance as well. Um, and if they don't come to compliance within the 10 day time period as uh, required by city ordinance, then we're going to issue them a citation to appear in, in municipal court. And then the municipal prosecutor and judge will um, judicate the case and give them a time frame for remedying the situation. The goal of this is to uh, have the property owner or tenant, as the case may be, um, address the issue themselves versus the city having to go out and actually take care of it. And then if they don't, within a reasonable time frame, we'll, we'll, mow, we'll, we'll do the mow order and be ass assessing those costs to the property owner. You're going to send a summons to the tenant or to the property owner? Uh, so by ordinance and by state law, we have to send the actual summons to the property owner as they are responsible for the property. Um, but the courtesy notice, the, the hope is that with the courtesy notice, uh, the tenant will do their part to take care of the situation. As the code enforcement officer will tell you, uh, the majority of our nuisance uh, complaints are addressed with those courtesy notices. So the hope is that by providing a courtesy notice, to the tenant as well as to the um, property owner, we can hopefully nip some of this stuff mm -hmm. before it requires further enforcement action. 
I like that. It's, it's, it gives it lets them know they're out of compliance before hitting them with a summons. I mean, it's, right. it's just I kind appreciate of the fact that you're also notifying the tenant. In addition to that, we're also going to take a, a another step, which um, we're preparing um, for all intents and purposes, we'll call them yard signs. Uh, and the purpose will be we'll actually install these or, or place them in the yard uh, that is not in compliance. And it, it serves two purposes. Number one, to let the, the property owner or tenant, whoever is residing on the property or who happens to uh, take, be taking care of the property or not taking care of the property, and know that they are not in compliance and will provide some provisions for coming into compliance. But perhaps more importantly, it will allow the neighborhood to know that enforcement activities are taking place uh, because sometimes people don't necessarily know what's happening in the background, but by putting this sign prominently on display in their yards, uh, the, the neighborhood will know that enforcement actions are being taken. And how long do you think that sign will stay there? Well, we don't, you know, the over under on that is probably two hours. But um, it's it's the intent I think that is is meant to meant to do. About that. as long as the orange sticker stay on the car, it won't work. <laughs> right. Those uh, are hard to get off. Yeah. So hopefully, and and there, if um, a property owner is does get to court, there are potential fines um, associated with this. But again, the intent is not to collect fines. The intent is to have folks mow and. and keep track of their yard. So that is that is ultimately the goal and that's that's the hope of that. So that segues into another conversation that we had that I do need some direction on. We had talked about the oil museum and the city's um, mowing of their property uh, for the past several years. I did speak with the executive director and he was not aware of a formal agreement. Um, it had been my understanding and his understanding at the time was that it was a, an agreement whereby the city had originally provided funds to the oil museum and then decided not to do that, but elected to give services in lieu of. Um, so I wanted to bring that before your, your all's attention so that we can get some direction on how to proceed with that um, so that we had some guidance on, on what, what we were gonna do and have some closure to, the, to that. I would say give them $2,500 and let them hire somebody to mow their lot. For the two thousand five hundred dollars, and get us out of it, because they're not going to be able to get anybody to do it for that price all summer long. They did not um, express the fact that they had booked or anything, so I, I don't know if they could or not. But we don't have the manpower to do it. They did offer to have us mow their property every five weeks instead of every uh, every few weeks. So, but depending on what the rain looks like, that could actually bring them into non-compliance, which is something we wouldn't necessarily want to promote, obviously, so. I would, I would vote for, or don't give them any money, and tell them we're not gonna mow it anymore. We don't give them any money now. Right? We do not give them any money presently, that's correct. I think they can afford to mow their own property. I think they have a very substantial endowment and they can afford to mow their own property. I think it's been a neighborly thing to do and it's been part of our, I mean, if, if we've been doing it, I'm not sure I know, do we really not have the manpower to do it? I mean, I guess that's the question. Well, the catalyst that kind of brought this all to our attention um, has somewhat passed because we've been able to uh, quickly fill those positions faster than what we originally anticipated. And I did receive notice from the Kansas Department of Corrections that we will be they will. They are are willing to come down and conduct a special training once we are fully staffed, which we anticipate to be within the next few weeks. So um, that may may alter uh, the decision that we we elect to take. Um, I think based on that information, we would we would be fully staffed and we would have the ability to so, take care so, of the property. So what I'm hearing, we'd be back in and and have our our on our 
camp labor uh, perhaps soon. Is that correct? Yes. Sooner than originally anticipated. And, and I think, to me, I mean, do, do we, would we anticipate it would be honor camp labor doing that mowing? Um, it will either be honor camp labor or part-time staff from the Parks and Rec Department. I think under the, under the goal that it be primarily honor camp labor that would be doing that mowing, I think that's a very, very appropriate thing to be partnerships with. It's not honor camp equipment and honor camp gasoline. <coughs> As much as true. I guess I kind of look at it like some of the other outside agencies that we deal with. That maybe they should accept some of the responsibility of mowing. Now I'm not saying they have to go out through all those oil derricks and and whatever, because I'm sure that is time consuming, but they could be responsible for some of it. We could, we could ask them to participate in the, in the gas, such to do it. But again, I think, I think targeting honor camp labor towards that activity, uh, and we are the facilitators of that, is completely appropriate. And if we could work out a deal where they help with fuel, then so be it. Okay. Where does our property stop and there's a big gas? Mm. <clears throat> uh, the parking lot on the east side, if, if I recall, is, is mostly ours. Um, their area is fenced. Um, so inside the chain link everywhere. Okay, so... <clears throat> With, with with that that bit of information, what we're talking about is not mowing inside the fence. We would still mow the street side and like along the pond. Is that kind of what we're talking about? Well, we would already mow around the pond. That's our that's yeah, that, that's what I'm. Yeah. But like on the street and, and in front not necessarily. I I don't think if 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 they were going to be responsible for the mowing, they would be responsible for the right away adjacent to the property. So okay, I don't so. Okay, so even that we would still be mowing up to the parking lot. We're just talking about west of the parking lot, in the fence, and in the right of way. Right. For a total of about nine acres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I get, I'm just, um, I would think that back there mowing around all those structures and rigs and stuff probably pretty time consuming. Yeah. How long does it take the city to move it? Um, you know Kevin's not here. Unfortunately I don't have that number in front he of me. He told us. He it did was, tell us. I it was, was sixteen hours. It was sixteen er, for four people. Four people, yeah. I think. Sixteen hours for four people every two weeks, I think was what it was. Two large mowers. Because it's quite a because even if you use the inmate labor, you still have to have one of our guys there. Supervising. I was like, okay, I didn't think it was every five. I thought it was six hours times three yeah. minutes. Yeah, is what I remember, and I, I may be wrong. I'm remembering 16. Okay, well, what about a compromise of we take care of the street side, and they take care of on the inside? That way, I mean, it, that, that seems like to me is the time consuming spot. And if we're, we're talking using inmate labor, that's, I mean, that, they could easily not realize they're screwing something up that's inside the fence. Um, I mean, as a compromise from just cutting them off to, uh, to help them out, we run, we run the, the, the street side and they take care of inside the fence. I'd support that. I mean, just to, just to, it keeps them looking at compliance and then inside the fence that's their problem. I'd support that. Do you need a motion or you just need a consensus from us? Uh, just a consensus would be 
preferred. Is it, is it a liability for us to be inside that fence since it's not our property? If we would damage something in there with one of our mowers, we would have to pay for it. I mean, since there is no formal agreement, there is, yes, there's some ambigu ambiguity with respect to how that would work. You're, yeah, that's probably an issue that that's we've not actually thought about. Before. That's that, yeah. I bet you one of our employees get hurt or something. You know, run over a piece of sucker rod or something. Yeah, you know. a machine. I think that's a good compromise. Yeah. And let's look, I mean, we, we put it in writing. We, we sent a little letter, this is what we're going to do. And you got five years and for us to figure this out, or two years or whatever, give them, we're going to do it for this point, but we've got to figure it out. I mean, it's mowing season, so it's good. I wouldn't mind making it an annual thing. Or right, yeah. Look at it annually. So you're talking about doing it this summer, but next year they'll have to figure it out. No, we'll look at it again annually. I think sure it is more cool. But you still want to mow it this summer, right? Not just drop them off. He's talking about the, the split compromise. This the summer. split. I'm talking about the split. I mean, we do outside the fence and starting this year. Yeah. Yeah. I assume that's what you meant. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I, look, okay. my, I need to mow my grass, so I understand. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm going to kill mine. <laughs> I'm just gonna, just Can I assume there's a lot of weed eating yes. around the barracks? So they go in and they mow, then they come back, and then they, or they, they finish mowing, and then they weed, weed whack it. So really what Matt's asking us to take care of is not really a whole lot of hair here, right? It's, it's, to me, it's, it seems like it's the easiest spot for us to get a, a mower over there, right, right. get done probably half a day, three quarters of a day if you've got a, you know, got a lawnmower. Okay, here's my thought. Chances are the oil museum is going to end up hiring probably teams during the summer to take care of it. Possibility. Possibly. Chances are they're cheaper though than I see the inmates as doing a better job around the structures mm -hmm. than a excuse me, possible teenager would take more care in what they're doing. Sure. And I'm going to assume that that's what the Oil Museum wants. So I don't know that I would <clears throat> somehow break up the mowing and the weed eating. I don't know how. I'm just, I'm thinking that maybe they hire somebody to come in and mow and then we send the inmates in to weed eat. I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, I don't wouldn't really want to get. Well, maybe what we can do is understanding that you all want to maybe form a compromise. Maybe I can go back to them and say, you know, the, the direction I got from the commission was that we're not going to mow the whole property, but we're willing to compromise and maybe try to figure it out at that level and then bring something back. I mean, I think that might be the best way of doing it instead of cutting out the property and. You know. I'm open thinking. <laughs> Yeah, and in, okay. in, 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 my, in my, I don't mind the compromise. I don't mind, uh, you know, the city paying attention and mowing outside the fence on a, on a regular basis, just to, because it's our entrance. Also, right, just keep the aesthetic. I mean, we want to, but I also, in, in my opinion, I think it's it's still a good service project for our honor camp laborers, and as long as we can facilitate that, continue to facilitate that, we should. Um, if we get to a point where we can no longer have that resource, well, then that's a different discussion. That'd be my opinion. Plus the fact that being an entrance to the town, it's important that it look good. So, do you have enough information to, 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 to... More than enough, right. To yes. keep negotiating with them? Yes. Uh, the next item I had, if you'll recall, in the <coughs> report on Friday, we I talked about the sales tax task force. Since that time, we've had 14, we now have 14 people 
that have expressed interest by completing an application. Um, the plan would be then to appoint that task force at the next regular meeting. Um, so if you all can track down a few more people, we can get to the magic 25 or 24 or whatever number. I guess it really doesn't matter. It's an arbitrary number, but probably the bigger the better. But we do have 14 now instead of six. So Could you maybe okay. send us a list so we don't re-ask the same people? We can definitely do that. Okay. We'll send you that. I'll send a new list tonight. We actually had another one add while you guys were in exact, so we have 15 now. Okay, good. Man. I've got a couple that are probably going to be submitting. I sent you a list. Yeah, yeah. List. That's okay. in that 14 that we're okay. talking about. Also, if you know of any women that would like to serve, we have, at this point... That's, that's the one I got. We have one female that is on the committee or task force this, thus far. Um, and because our community is primarily 50-50, um, in the interest of representation, it would be wise to okay. maybe facilitate some of that. And the question I get is, what will they be asked to do? So this task force it would will probably be asked to first of all look at some of the options that the commission has been discussing over the past couple of, of uh, months, and then once a decision is made on what direction to proceed on, on a sales tax ballot question, it's my understanding that the task force has been charged with um, marketing the sales tax to the community uh, for the upcoming ballot. By state law, the city cannot. Um, ask people or encourage people to vote yes. We can only share information with respect to a ballot initiative that the city is promoting. Um, so the task force's responsibility is to promote the yes voice, if you will. So what I've been telling them is we'd like their input on a recommendation on what the sales tax question should look like. And we've already, when we've kind of seen some of those options, so, and then, uh, they become owners of that recommendation and then they are then our campaign committee, if you will, for the November vote. So we put it on Facebook and then tell them to contact you, that was okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so you just can't put on Facebook, vote yes for the right. one cent sales tax. Yeah. That's what I they, they can. We can. Oh, you can. can. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, the last thing um, that I wanted to kind of get some guidance on, the um, as you will also recall in my report, um, the train depot sign was recently repainted, and when it was returned, it was returned with a name of a new park. Um, it was actually the Memorial Sculptures Park. Um, and so the city actually has a policy with respect to naming parks. Um, so staff is removing that insert from the sign for the time for the time being and um, We can take that naming proposal that request to the recreation board for their review um, but at this point, I think it's um, Not necessarily appropriate for someone to paint a sign and name us name us name a park without it going through the proper channels So I wanted to make sure that, that was okay and if, um, well, Main Street had asked to paint the sign because the sign had, a, had said something like, I don't know, train depot, whatever, but Main Street Association, because to my understanding, they used to be located in the depot. Um, so they wanted to repaint the sign for aesthetic purposes, but they also wanted to remove Main Street Association from the sign since they were no longer located there. And then upon returning the sign, it said Memorial Sculptures Park. So, so we don't have, we have no idea who decided to name So Main it. Street put the name up. I would speculate, yes. They put the sign up, so they... Right, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> well, and taking it down until such time that we want to name it appropriately. Yeah. Right. Or follow the process to get it named. Okay. I guess I don't see that it needs to be named anything. Anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of me too, name? but I'm... Where did you put? <laughs> don't believe it's going to be Sculpture Park. Rock Island Park. <laughs> and then the last thing I have is the, um, there's a, a, for lack of a better word, a grassroots effort um, that is looking at designing a city flag, probably with all the momentum that Wichita has garnered for their uh, flag recently. 
there's an idea that, hey, we want to be uh, just like that and have our own city flag. So this group has been trying to put together a, a city design for a flag, mm -hmm. and they've produced several different designs, but it's my understanding that the committee decided to scrap all of those designs, and they are inviting the general public to submit um, their designs, and they'd like to organize a community um, in essence, the public will be able to submit designs and then there'll be a community vote. And the top, I don't know, five vote getters or whatever number they come up with will be pushed for further consideration. And the deadline to submit a design for a city flag is 5 p.m. on May 11th. So if you're if you're interested or you know someone that is artsy and maybe would like to submit a design for a potential city flag, um, I would encourage them to do so. Um, they can get in touch with Molly here at the city uh, 321 9100 um, and she'll walk them through how to submit. Now, I think there's also some information on the city's Facebook page as well. Uh, but this will be a fun opportunity for folks to get involved and at the, at the end of the day, <coughs> we'll have a pretty good art demonstration of our different talents and abilities. So, Ultimately, at the end of the day, any kind of official flag gets a adopted by the commission, is that correct? Yes. The I think the group's idea is to bring the top boat getter to the commission for consideration. Yeah. Good. I think that's great. I saw some of that floating around and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yes. Is our next work session gonna have the same agenda as the one we had to cancel? Um, it will be pretty much the same agenda, yes. There might be a couple of items that are added to it. Okay. That'll be the 25th? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Any further business for the commission? If none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Move to second for the comment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 to 0. We are adjourned.